so we have a record of this as well. So good evening and welcome to Repro Action's Act and Learn webinar, What a Difference a Year Makes, Reviewing 2017 and Prepping for 2018. Sorry to all of our attendees for technical hiccups. We're back online and happy to be with you. So first up, your host, this is Erin Matson. I'm based in Arlington, Virginia, and I'm one of the co-founders and co-directors of Repro Action. And this is Pamela Merritt. I'm based in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm the other co-founder and co-director of Repro Action. So let me just go through the agenda for tonight, um, now that we've gotten through our technical difficulties. Um, so I'm going to do a quick introduction of Repro Action and what we're about for people who have not been to one of our Act and Learn webinars this year. Then we're going to go through um, an overview of our toolkit, which is fantastic and amazing. Um, that is a wonderful resource for taking action against uh, anti-abortion fake clinics. And then we're going to go through our campaigns this year and some of the amazing and exciting work that we were able to do. Um, I can tell you that this was so exciting to actually kind of look through everything that we've accomplished this year. Um, and, and I hope that you share in our excitement um, as we review these, these various campaigns. I'm not going to run through all of them, but because um, that's the purpose of the webinar, but we will be reviewing each and every one of them. And then uh, once we're done with um, the abortion, not just for your mistress campaign, then we'll go through next steps. And then there will be a time uh, set aside for Q&A. Um, if you have questions, please drop them into the chat feature of your GoTo webinar control panel. Um, so you just drop a question in there or in the question feature actually. And I will get to those questions at the end of the webinar. And then we try to be very prompt. So we'll wrap up at eight o'clock. And if you are tweeting, um, please use the ReproAction hashtag. So who the heck is ReproAction? Um, ReproAction is a new direct action group that formed to increase access to abortion and advance reproductive justice. We are so proud of our left flank analysis and our willingness to hold all people accountable um, on all sides of the political spectrum, regardless of whether they identify as allies or the opposition. And we are very, very proud and dedicated and committed to nonviolent direct action. So when they go low, we organize. And we kicked off 2017 pledging active resistance to reproductive oppression. And we called in for four years of resistance. The Trump regime um, in the Trump administration is one of the most anti-abortion administrations and anti-reproductive health um, administrations in this nation's history. And we, we started 2017 prepared to do the work that is required to hold them accountable, but also to energize, to educate, and to train the, the masses, for lack of a better word, on how to use direct action as a, as a tool of resistance. So let's take a look at some of the amazing and inspiring campaigns that, made, um, that were made possible by activists just like you. Great, Aaron. so I'll take care. Thank you, Pamela. So the first thing that I want to do is talk, uh, kick us off with our work on crisis pregnancy centers, which you may have heard of. Uh, crisis pregnancy centers are anti-abortion fake clinics that exist for the purpose of misleading and shaming people who seek abortion care. And there are more than 2,500 such crisis pregnancy centers in the United States. And Repro Action is working diligently day and night to expose the truth about crisis pregnancy centers. Specifically, we're standing up to the deception and shaming that takes place at fake clinics. And something that I want to be very clear about, we are calling for accountability specifically on money. These are institutions that often take in millions of dollars from taxpayers. Some states even divert TANF or temporary assistance for needy families dollars, so dollars that are intended to feed hungry children, they're diverting them to these fake clinics. And what we're super excited about is a toolkit that we put together. It's actually at our homepage, www.reproaction.com. 
org that is packed with tips for taking on anti-abortion fake clinics in your community. It covers information, everything from how to find those clinics to how to organize a protest against them to sample letters to the editors and tips about working with media. So I encourage you to get on our website at www.reproaction.org because if you've seen the amazing work that we've been proud to lead with activists around the country on crisis pregnancy centers, um, as you'll see up in the, this upcoming presentation, what we want to kick this off with is actually you, the people on this call right now. And we'd like to encourage you all to go um, as a next step from this webinar and take a look at that toolkit. And with that, I'm going to pass it to Pamela to talk about exposing fake clinics in St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, so we actually launched our grassroots organizing in Missouri um, by calling attention to and calling out a fake an anti-abortion fake clinic in St. Louis called Thrive. Um, and that, that was way back in 2016. Um, we have been doing this work and doing direct actions at anti-abortion fake clinics in uh, uh, St. Louis and throughout Missouri since then. And this year, we were so excited um, and so fired up to partner with our friends at Lady Parts Justice for several of their weeks of action, which I think layered very, very well over the work that we had already strategically decided to do to call out fake clinics in Missouri. Um, so I am, as I said earlier, am based in St. Louis, Missouri. So we've done um, direct actions out in front of Birthright, out in front of Thrive, which is a fake clinic in St. Louis City. And then we had uh, our Columbia, Missouri organizer, Eva, who is actually the statewide organizer for Missouri. She's based in Columbia and she organized several awesome uh, visibility actions out in front of the only uh, anti-abortion fake clinic in Columbia, Missouri. Um, these were actually a lot of fun to participate in, but they also have a purpose, which is to educate the community that these clinics are not healthcare um, providers, that in Missouri, as Erin mentioned, they do receive state tax credits, and they also have uh, federal TANF funds that are diverted um, from their original purpose, which is to alleviate hunger, and they are actually sent to these clinics that do nothing to address uh, Missouri's um, hung, uh, child hunger and family hunger um, uh, uh, issues. And then more importantly, what they do is they mislead, and in, and in many cases, they lie to women um, who are trying to seek information about abortion care and when they are operating in your community um, they they try to masquerade as if they are uh, just you know good-hearted people who are trying to provide information but in reality they are very well organized and they are very deceptive in their tactics so the reason we do these direct actions and the reason we try to highlight these fake clinics in the media is so that people living in communities like St. Louis City, in Columbia, and then across the country know exactly what they're dealing with when these fake clinics are operating in their community. Thank you, Erin. Great. All right, Pamela. Well, let's keep it going on anti-abortion fake clinics and accountability, shall we? Um, so with that, I'd like to talk about a very large direct action that we led in Atlanta, Georgia with our friends and partners from Sister Song, the woman of color led reproductive justice collective that is uh, the mothership of the reproductive justice movement and it's, they're based in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm going to take a step back for a moment and talk about human coalition. So Repro Action has identified human coalition as the creepy big data arm of the fake clinic movement in this country. So what Human Coalition does is they intentionally deceive people who are seeking abortion care and pretend that they offer abortion services with the intent of drawing them in the door and then misleading them and shaming them out of their decision. 
And Human Coalition runs these advertisements and does this work. They bring people in through Google search, and then they uh, have their phone counselors try to funnel them into one of their fake clinics. Human Coalition does this around the country, but in particular, they own and operate four fake clinics. One is in Atlanta, one is in Pittsburgh, one is in Raleigh, and one is in Grapevine, which is a suburb of Dallas, Fort Worth. The Cura Fake Clinic in Atlanta, Georgia, calls itself Cura Women's Care Clinic. And the thing that Human Coalition really doesn't want people to know is who they really are. And this is actually a key pain point for crisis pregnancy centers when you do work in your communities. One of the things that they most don't want is for people to know that they're actually an anti-abortion fake clinic. Human Coalition's fake clinics operate as if they uh, do not oppose abortion. And we know that their founder and owner, uh, Brian Fisher, who is uh, based in Texas, he has admitted that the woman, what he calls the abortion determined woman, unquote, will not come into the crisis pregnancy center voluntarily, unquote. And he admits he needs to deceive them. So we brought it with our friends from Sister Song, y'all. What we did was at Netroots Nation, we organized a couple hundred people who went marching through the streets of downtown Atlanta, and we did a big rally right outside of the Cura Fake Clinic. In response to this, the, uh, the Human Coalition actually has issued several calls for fundraising, and at first they claimed that they actually needed to hire security guards, which is absolutely a moment to pause and reflect um, for a couple of reasons. One, we are, of course, and always entirely peaceful, and if you can't handle women saying that they want you to tell them the truth, that tells you everything you need to know. Um, and number two, the other thing is just the power of projection of the anti-abortion movement could not be more rich. It is their side that, uh, that incites and tolerates violence and murder and terrorism targeting abortion providers. And so, uh, so this is something that we've been really proud of. We're continuing to turn the heat on Human Coalition. Our campaign lead, Shireen Shakuri, does regular blog posts on on them that you can read at reproaction.org. They're informative, they're even entertaining, so um, please stay tuned for more on that. And if you live in a human coalition city, how we would love to talk to you. And again, those cities are Raleigh, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and then the Dallas Fort Worth area. Thank you, Erin. Uh, thank you so much. So, Back to Missouri, where, um, as I mentioned earlier, we had identified Thrive Women's Express Healthcare um, as an anti-abortion fake clinic. They also um, are a large provider of uh, what they call compre or they call sex ed in St. Louis um, public schools. So um, they've long been a problem in the St. Louis area. As somebody who used to work at Planned Parenthood affiliates in Missouri, um, they were often positioned right out in front of the state's lone surgical abortion provider, and they would try to divert people who were seeking health care from the health care center across the street to their mobile um, fake clinic. So I'm very familiar with them and have long um, wished to be able to expose them uh, for what they are. Um, Thrive has also has a large marketing um, campaign. Uh, this is a multi-million dollar um, anti-abortion fake clinic. And so their footprint when you live in St. Louis, Missouri is very extensive. The other thing that's important to know is that St. Louis has, in Missouri, has some of the the worst um, health outcomes for people who actually do choose to complete their pregnancy in the country. So for black women, they are four times more likely uh, to die as a result of pregnancy related complications. And for black infants, it's around the same ratio um, of black infants that will die you know, before reaching their first year of life. So when we think about reproductive justice and the intersection of uh, reproductive oppression, one of the things that really pops up in my mind is what gets prioritized by people in power 
for funding or also for protection and then what doesn't get prioritized and the hypocrisy that lies in there and the thrive um, and missouri anti-abortion fake clinic situation is a perfect example of that that if people were really concerned about um, the lives of mothers and the lives of infants then they would prioritize infant and maternal mortality and they would not prioritize for special treatment these fake clinics that deceive women. Um, in the state of Missouri, it's important to know that it is actually um, prohibited by state law for local municipalities to do any kind of regulation of crisis pregnancy centers. So even if St. Louis City wanted to have some sort of oversight over these fake clinics, they can't. They are, are protected, uniquely protected in state law. The other thing to know, as I said earlier, is that these fake clinics in Missouri get state tax credits. And, and when you couple that with that protection, they have no oversight. So they are receiving state tax dollars and taxpayers in the state of Missouri really have no say or no, no knowledge of what they're doing other than their marketing and um, the fact that they plant themselves in front of the city's loan abortion provider. So when we couple all of that together with the fact that, oh, go ahead to the next slide, that the executive director of Thrive um, spoke at the, um, the Midwest March for Life in, uh, in mid-Missouri earlier in the year and basically praised the, the political participation of the KKK in the election of Donald Trump and um, our new governor, Eric Greitens. Um, it's very disturbing when you think about this funded and taxpayer funded entity that um, apparently thinks that the participation of the Klan is a good thing. The exact quote by Bridget Van Means, who is the president of Thrive, was that God's people came out this election. It was awesome. Catholics, Protestants, the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, everyone came out for the babies. I saw that quote like thousands of other Missourians in a statewide political um, newspaper, and I was outraged. I was like, who is going to call out Bridget Van Means? Um, so we had a lot of conversations internally at ReproAction. The team kind of put our head together and we realized that we were the ones who were going to call out Bridget Van Means for praising the political participation of the Klan. And more importantly, we were going to call her out for being the president of an anti-abortion fake clinic and taking tax dollars from hardworking Missourians that should be going towards programs that that help address our alarming infant and maternal mortality rates, but it instead are going to a deceptive anti-abortion fake clinic that thinks that the KKK is a good thing. Next slide. Um, so that was the campaign that we did to expose Thrive. And then that actually links very closely to our infant and mortality work. So we did direct actions to expose um, Thrive. We were on the on the internet. We had a full page ad in the paper, um, but our messaging was very intersectional because we wanted to draw attention to the fact that our outrage is coupled with our outrage over Missouri's infant and maternal mortality rates. Um, we were so excited to have Eva, um, our Missouri organizer, join our team. And she brought with her a wealth of knowledge about, um, specifically about reproductive justice. And she came up with the concept for our infant and maternal mortality campaign. Um, so we were already doing this work to expose fake clinics. We were already calling out the hypocrisy of what people in power were prioritizing in Missouri versus what needed attention. And then this awesome campaign um, was launched by Eva, um, which includes a screening of a documentary called Death by Delivery, which is a documentary by Fusion, who we've partnered with. And once, um, and, and she's able to organize a panel to discuss the documentary, which specifically dives in 
into the issue of infant and maternal mortality um, and the need for attention to be drawn to this health crisis. And then we have these screenings in various local communities in Columbia, in Jefferson City, in St. Louis, in the Boot Hill, Southern Missouri, where a lot of progressive organizations no longer go and do organizing. And we plan to do screenings in Kansas City um, and in Springfield. And so we're trying to cover the entire state of Missouri and educate our fellow residents about this crisis and have that education come from their friends and neighbors. Our panelists for our infant and maternal mortality um, uh, events are local people. They're people who have been personally impacted by infant and or maternal mortality. They're doulas, they're birth justice activists, they're reproductive justice activists, they're OBGYNs, they're people who are working on public health. And they're coming together to talk about this issue and specifically talk about it in your local community. So I'm so proud of this work. I'm so excited at the, the fact that it has educated the public and the energy that has gotten behind this campaign. And I can't wait to see what we're able to do to address this public health crisis in 2018. Thank you, Pamela. All right, so shifting gears a bit. So Repro Action is, as you know, a direct action organization formed to increase access to abortion and advance reproductive justice. We're very proud of our intersectional work. In terms of our strategic plan, there's really only three things we're trying to do. Number one, build our organization. Number two, hold the pro-life movement or abortion opponents accountable for the harm that they're causing people around this country and the entire world. And number three, give abortion a permanent seat at the progressive table. Which brings us to our next campaign that we have been running in 2017. And that is our Big Tent Fellows campaign. So this has been a year where there have been a number of really alarming conversations within the left with people suggesting that there is such a thing as an anti-abortion progressive which is simply impossible. There is no such thing as economic justice without reproductive justice. There is no such thing as a pro-life progressive. To be a progressive means a number of things, including um, access to health care, uh, support for science, um, access to adequate medical care for everyone, economic justice, and respect and equality for women and all people. And abortion rights is an indivisible part of all of those things. In particular, we have watched with consternation as folks on the left have made unhelpful and, and frankly, not just unhelpful, but completely unsubstantiated claims that by, by caving in on abortion, perhaps that's the way to beat Donald Trump. Which i just like to pause there and say, there's no way to beat Donald Trump by acting like Donald Trump, by acting um, to support further restrictions on access to health care, by acting to criminalize abortion. And a particularly egregious example of this behavior within the left, although he is no progressive, um, the Democratic senator from West Virginia, Joe Manchin, met with David Delighton earlier this year. David Delighton is the maker of the highly deceptive and fraudulent sting videos targeting Planned Parenthood that directly um, help to fan the flame of violence. And his, the rallying cry in those videos about supposed baby body parts uh, was actually repeated by the mass shooter who went inside the Colorado Springs Planned Parenthood and murdered three people and injured nine others. So there's really no reason that anyone should be uh, meeting with David Delighton. In fact, his work, if you can even call it that, um, led to 15 felony charges against him and a, an accomplice. Um, and I do want to stress and underscore that in all of this harassment of Planned Parenthood that has taken place at the federal level and at the state level, there have been several state investigations, and none of them found any wrongdoing as alleged 
by uh, Delighted and others. Um, no wrongdoing on the part of Planned Parenthood. All of the wrongdoing, frankly, sat with Delighted himself. And so we actually, uh, ReproAction organized a team. You see us there in our orange t shirts. And we caught Senator Joe Manchin on the street and we live streamed the confrontation on Facebook. Uh, you can see that at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ReproAction. And we gave him several opportunities on where to draw the line and gave him an opportunity to denounce anti-abortion terrorism, and he failed to do so. We have been incredibly bold. Here I am um, speaking directly with him, and you can see people speaking to him, truth to power. Folks were talking about the violence at the Planned Parenthood. Folks were talking about um, the, the crimes that uh, Delighton is currently facing in federal court. And he said, you know, that he would speak to everyone on all sides of the issue, and we think that's completely unacceptable. And we will continue to hold Senator Joe Manchin accountable. And we also want to be clear that if we need to start doing this type of more confrontational direct action with others on the left who are making these suggestions, that we are more than happy to do so. And then in closing, before I pass it to Pamela for the next one, I'd just like to say, because we're still hearing echoes and reverberations of this argument. It really reached a fever pitch earlier this year. You had a number of leaders on the left from Bernie Sanders to Nancy Pelosi to Keith Ellison to others, uh, Chuck Schumer, who were suggesting that maybe the, the thing to do was to moderate on abortion. And there's been a walk back from that at this point uh, to some extent, but the idea is still kind of out there with people making unhelpful suggestions that, in fact, moderating on abortion would help. There's no available data to show that. And the best available data that we have is actually in Virginia, where, um, where 15 new seats in the House of Delegates just went to openly pro-choice uh, candidates who are now going to be state legislators. And that's in Virginia, my home state. Um, which is not considered a liberal bastion by any stretch of the agenda so, uh, or the imagination. So with that, I'll pass it back to Pamela. Thank you very much. And speaking of Virginia, um, the next campaign I want to highlight is um, standing up for clinic access in Northern Virginia. Virginia. So this year we were super excited to bring on board Caitlin Blenny, who is our Northern Virginia and our Virginia organizer. Um, and we were extremely, extremely excited to partner um, through her organizing with NARAL Pro Choice Virginia um, and specifically to partner on positive presences to support the Falls Church Healthcare, Healthcare Center in Northern Virginia. As somebody who worked um, at an abortion provider for five years and had to walk what on certain days was a gauntlet every single every single day in a week. Um, I, I can personally attest to um, how much it lifts your spirits and how empowering and inspiring it is to have a positive presence be there. And one of the things that we are very committed to, um, it's it's one of it's in our in our mission is to increase access to abortion. A big part of that is making sure that people understand that they are supported by their fellow community members when they go into an abortion provider to access care. So what um, what Caitlin was able to organize in partnership with NARAL Pro Choice Virginia is sub is monthly positive presences to support the healthcare center and rain or shine, you can see in that picture activists showed up with positive messages um, they were smiling and they were a counterpoint to the hostile aggressive and often um, just some horrific rhetoric that comes out of the mouth of um, people who are there as anti-abortion protesters um, so they sent a message loud and clear in Northern Virginia that they weren't going to tolerate, these activists are not going to tolerate um, hatred and harassment in their community in Northern Virginia. Um, we, uh, uh, as I said, NARAL actually began these positive presences in November of 2016. 
So when Caitlin came on board this year, um, they were actually um, very excited to be able to share um, the weight of that organizing, but also the empowerment of that experience. That even though um, you know the weather can be unpredictable, and even though um, sometimes the the protesters can be a little intimidating, that there is it's it's amazing. I love direct action. I love how empowering it is, and I particularly love this kind of direct action, this specific campaign, because I can personally um, pledge that it, it warms the hearts of not just the people um, going into that clinic to access care, but but also the staff who know that there are members of their own community who have a sign in their hand that says honk if you support freedom of choice and to trust women. So, um, so that was an, an exciting campaign. Um, and I know that as our capacity allows, we will continue to stand up for clinic access in Northern Virginia. All right, so in keeping with the theme of Virginia, um, the other thing that um, that we that broadly stand up for is access to reproductive health care. Um, so I'm going to turn the clock back a little bit to uh, 2016 and my um, fantastic co-director was walking through a Harris Teeter in uh, Northern Virginia. And for those of you uh, who are not from the East Coast, um, this is like a CVS or a Walgreens, um, basically like a local pharmacy. Um, I have a particular fondness for these kind of pharmacies. I love to spend quality time in them. And my co-director, Erin, was in her local Harris Teeter and um, perusing the aisles. And she noticed that they did not have plans B one step, which is emergency contraception, um, it was not actually on the shelf. What they had was a card. And uh, what customers were being uh, asked to do is to take this card and either go to the pharmacy, which wasn't necessarily open all the time, or find a store manager and have that person then open up, I'm assuming, um, some sort of secret drawer and access and, and give you um, emergency contraception. Um, so first of all, that is outrageous. It's um, ridiculous that you should have to go through these kind of hurdles to access uh, emergency contraception. It's been more than a few years since the FDA um, updated their guidelines to bring them in line with reality um, and basically told retailers um, that they needed to be making plan B, one step, and emergency contraception available. So Erin was understandably outraged, and she wrote an awesome piece in Rewire, which if you are not reading Rewire, you need to be. They're fantastic. Um, so Erin wrote a piece, um, and she actually reached out to Harris Teeter and asked them to uh, fix this and explain to them um, that it, that creating those kind of hurdles um, actually, um, you know, it basically doubled down on stigma um, for a lot of people, young people, undocumented people. Um, it, it is in uh, people who um, are LGBTQ. It, it actually makes that even harder for them to access uh, emergency contraception and in, in, in that kind of card on the shelf as opposed to easy access on the shelf um, is creating an, an unnecessary um, and not recommended by the FDA hurdle to accessing emergency contraception. And they basically um, responded at, with a shrug and did, that they weren't going to change their policy. So um, we've been thinking through exactly how to address this because as a direct action organization, um, when, when they go low, we organize. So um, when Caitlin came on board for 
to be our Virginia organizer, um, the Harris Teeter campaign was one of the first things that I brought up to her. And I actually believe that I mentioned it when I was first talking to her about the position. And she came up with a fantastic campaign plan to um, do a direct action and organize a direct action, both to educate the public about why it's important and for Harris Teeter and retailers like Harris Teeter to make Plan B One Step available on the shelf, and then also to energize activists so that they could check their own uh, retailer, their own Harris Teeter, and see if they encountered the same problem. We launched our Harris Teeter campaign on November 20th, and um, Arlington, Virginia. And as you can see from this picture, um, people showed up, and I believe that I mentioned the Virginia weather. So um, this was a full winter coat day, but, but folks showed up and were fired up to do this um, this visibility action. And we had tremendous coverage from the media. And one, uh, one moment that really kind of blew my mind was that a woman who was just walking by um, the action actually was like, what are y'all doing out there? And so my colleagues explained that, um, that they were out there to, uh, to do a visibility action and to demand that Harris Teeter make Plan B One Step in emergency contraception available on the shelf. And this woman was like, oh, hell yeah. And she grabbed the sign and joined the action and stayed because this is an issue that is as close to the heart of people who are committed to access to reproductive health care and to um, you know, fair practices in, in how businesses comport themselves, there's absolutely no reason why Harris Teeter um, continues to not put uh, Plan B one step on the shelf. And for until they change their policy, we are committed to taking action at Harris Teeter, which folks should know has a large footprint on the East Coast, over 200 different outlets. So when they aren't stocking Plan B One Step on the shelf, it is impacting communities all over the East Coast and the, and the Southern East Coast as well. All right. Thank you, Pamela. So as you said, we're super proud of our work on Harris Teeter. Next, I'm going to talk about um, our abortion, not just for your mistress campaign. And this picture is taken outside of the Values Voter Summit in Washington, D.C. The Values Voter Summit is an annual gathering of conservatives that's convened by the Family Research Council, a, uh, a designated hate group as recognized by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, this year, uh, uh, Donald Trump became the first United States president to address this annual hate confab. So, just want to underscore um, how extreme and dangerous this administration is. And it's sort of a who's who of the far right. And right around the same time, Representative, or shall I say, former Congressman Tim Murphy was revealed to have pressured his mistress to obtain an abortion in spite of the fact that he had put together a number of pious posts um, on Facebook um, speaking in support of the March for Life. And when the transcripts that came out in the news were incredible, they said, you know, uh, he would say back that his staff wrote the post and he winced when he read them. Um, but he, he steadily voted away uh, the rights of other people consistently in Congress. And yet he wanted a different set of rules for himself or for his own political career, right? He only wanted abortion as a meter, uh, as a matter of convenience for him. He didn't even care about what the person he'd been in a relationship with wanted. So we went out and we were a welcoming committee right outside the Values Voter Summit on the first day with our abortion, not just for your mistress banner, and there we are. Um, as folks came in, we would wave to them and greet them. Um, we were right outside the main doors. And in addition to that, we had a mobile billboard truck with the same messages, including headlines of about uh, former Congressman Murphy uh, driving around town for three days for the Values Voter Summit. And these produced quite a splash. And uh, the image went viral on social media, and we had a, a great deal of press coverage, including 
uh, including a column in the conservative Washington Times acknowledging the action and, um, and seeming very defensive. So we knew we hit a bullseye on this one. Um, we also uh, had a digital ad campaign. And what I want to underscore is why we did this work. It's not just to call attention to the hypocrisy of the anti-abortion movement, but to speak directly to their moral bankruptcy, right? They claim that they're against abortion, but they want to indeed force it upon people that they have relationships with for their own political convenience. They claim um, to support women, and yet they have stood behind a president who has openly bragged about sexual assault on, on tape. Um, they claim to want to protect children, and yet they steadily uh, block expanding access to healthcare, including Medicaid, that would help uh, that would help especially uh, especially needy uh, children, and that disproportionately benefits women of color. So, we want to call attention to their hypocrisy and their moral bankruptcy. In addition to the the welcoming committee that we had at the Values Voter Summit. We then went on and took these over to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh is the area where uh, former Congressman Murphy, that's his district. And what we had was these billboards that we ran on the freeway. That's an actual photograph you see. These ran for four weeks. We had three billboards. It started quite a conversation in, lo in local Pittsburgh press. Um, it's been featured in the Pittsburgh City Paper. Um, I was able to speak to uh, the CBS affiliate in Pittsburgh. We even had um, people have been sending in their comments to us. We've received some really meaningful notes from members of the community thanking us for running these billboards. And we're super proud to do this aggressive confrontational work. We are proud to say abortion out loud, and we know that abortion is not just for the mistresses of conservative Congress people, but abortion is in fact something that should be available to everyone. We celebrate access to abortion as a good thing. We think that every person should have safe, easy, ready access to abortion in their community, that abortion should be funded, that there should be no shame around abortion, and that it certainly shouldn't be restricted just to the whims of conservative Congress people. And with that, um, I'm going to encourage you to plug into Repro Action Campaigns. Um, you can sign up for alerts at www.reproaction.org. Um, on that homepage, not only can you sign up for alerts and donate if you wish to give a year-end donation, we won't uh, fight you on that. Uh, you can also download our toolkit on, um, on holding crisis pregnancy centers accountable in your community. You can also follow us on social media um, we are ReproAction at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with the news that is just broken this evening about um, conservative Congressman Trent Franks, who has been one of the worst opponents of abortion rights in this country and has been truly heinous and terrible, even suggesting that uh, rape rarely results from pregnancy and continually sponsoring 20-week abortion bans and making outrageous statements on the House floor. The breaking news is that he has, um, he is resigning from Congress after it's been revealed that he asked two different staffers who worked for him to be a surrogate for him. It's unbelievable how much The Handmaid's Tale is coming to life. And we are sickened by the sexual assault epidemic. And so um, I'd like to reveal that our next Act and Learn webinar topic is going to be Me Too, A Reckoning. And we will be meeting on Tuesday, January 7, 16th from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Please put this in your calendar. I know this is going to be a spectacular webinar. And, um, and be sure you're signed up for our email list, and you will get an invitation. And with that, I'll pass it to Pamela in case there's any questions. Thank you very much. So I'm not seeing any questions in the question tab. If you do have questions, please go ahead and drop them in to the GoToWebinar control panel. You'll see a little tab, an arrow, that says questions. 
and you can just type it in and then I can um, go ahead and and get that asked and answered for you. Um, while we wait to see if any of the attendees have questions, um, I think now is a pretty good time to talk about some of the things um, or some advice that we have prepping for 2018. Um, so as as I said, when we kicked off this webinar, um, when they go low, we organize. So um, I'll take a first stab at it, Erin, that um, what, what I am looking forward to in prepping for 2018 is to um, kind of get rested and get healthy and get my mind in the right space this has been one heck of a year and uh you know no kidding what a year what a difference a year makes not only have we seen some of the most regressive policies um being floated and and it's also brought out some of the worst in um in our fellow um community members all across this country but we've also seen this awesome act of resistance that I find so inspiring and I'm proud to be a part of. And that I, I know that um, every time I log on to the internet, my heart is gonna break, but it's also going to be filled back up and made whole by the fact that um, there are some amazing people who are doing fantastic work, but it's also exhausting. And this has been 12 months of relentlessness. Um, the opposition and uh, is, is organized to try to wear people down. So now is a great time, um, if you're able to, to kind of step back from the never ending cycle of social media, if you can, and take a walk. And and take a nap and <laughs> eat good food and surround yourself with really amazing, fantastic um, people, friends and family. And you know, remind, uh, remind yourself, as I plan to remind myself, of why I do this work. Because 2018 is gonna be upon us before we blink. And it's gonna be just as, as fast paced, just as tough. Um, but we've learned a lot of hard lessons this year. We've honed our skills, and I know that we're ready um, to make that push and 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 actually move beyond resistance to really strong liberation work. Um, Aaron, did you have anything you wanted to add? I'm. I think that's a great close for us. If there are no more questions, but I will say that. Uh, that I am so excited to continue to work with activists around the country. Repro Action is doing really cutting edge culture change work with your support and help around the country. We are not backing down. We are leaning in to discomfort. We are ready, we are here. We are excited for our next webinar on January 16th, Tuesday, January 16th, to talk about Me Too and a Reckoning. Things are only getting started, y'all, and we are gonna do so much more, so thank you. Thanks so much, Erin. So I just wanna make sure that um, we thank our fantastic staff. We have an amazing team at ReproAction, and this work is made possible um, by our colleagues and um, by supporters just like you and by grassroots activists who do fantastic work, who take time out of their every day um, to do online actions and do grassroots actions. Um, so this has been an exciting and amazing year. Year, and it's been a pleasure and an honor to organize Towards Justice with all of you. Um, so I will wrap it it up. We're a little bit early, um, but that never hurts. And thank you again for joining our webinar. We hope that you'll visit us at reproaction.org and we will see you in the streets. Have a fantastic and happy new year, everybody. Bye-bye.